Once upon a time, in a small town lived two siblings, a boy and a girl. The boy's name was Harry, and he was so naughty. And the girl's name was Sally. She was very smart, but also a bit forgetful. Harry and his older sister, Sally, were very poor. They often went to bed with their stomachs empty and were hungry every day. At night, it was hard for them to go to sleep because their stomachs hurt. One day, Sally was so hungry, her stomach would not stop rumbling. Oh, we haven't eaten a bite for days. Sally wanted to take a walk in the park to forget her hunger and left the house. She took her canteen of water with her. After a while, she wanted to drink some water and rest. However, just then, an old woman in shabby clothes appeared before her. The woman slowly walked up to Sally. <coughs> Girl, give me a sip of water. I haven't had a drink of water for days. I'm so thirsty. <coughs> of course, here you go. You can drink as much as you want. The old woman drank the water and turned into a beautiful young fairy in an instant. A fairy! I want to thank you for your help, beautiful girl. Make a wish. My brother Harry and I are very poor and hungry for days. All right. Look on the table as soon as you get home. You will see a magic bowl. A magic bowl? Yes. When you say cook bowl, cook a hot meal. It will cook for you sweet porridge. When you say stop bowl, I'm full. It will stop cooking. Now you and your brother will never go hungry. Thank you so much, young fairy. Hey, little girl, don't forget the magic words for the magic bowl. Sally ran back home. Indeed, as the fairy said, there was a bowl on the table. Hmm. Sister, where did this fancy bowl come from? It's not fancy, Harry. It's magical. This is a magic bowl. Oh, okay, but what good is an empty bowl even if it is magic? Now, be quiet and watch. Cook, bowl. Cook a hot meal. After the magic words, the bowl suddenly got hot and started to cook sweet porridge. B but this... How, how did this happen? The bowl is truly magical, so we won't be hungry anymore. Harry and Sally ate not one or two, but ten plates of sweet porridge. And when they were finally done, Sally said the magic words to stop the bowl from making more. Oh, I'm finally full. This porridge is delicious. Oh, I could eat this every day. <laughs> Indeed, Sally and Harry ate sweet porridge for days and never got tired of the taste. One day, before Sally went out, she wanted to tell her brother Harry how to stop the bowl from cooking. Harry! Harry! I have to tell you something very important. Come now. Harry ignored his sister's call and didn't come to her. So Sally went to him. But just in that moment, she forgot what she was going to say, because she was often forgetful. Ah, uh, what is it? Why are you standing over me? I'm sleeping, can't you see? I was going to say something very important, but... You forgot, huh? Classic Sally, a sister with a fish memory. Don't be so mean, Harry. Anyway, I better go. But once she was outside... Sally remembered what she had to say to her brother. Oh, now I remember. I had to remind him how to stop the magic bowl. Oh, well. Harry won't wake up until I get home anyway. But sure enough, Harry woke up while she was away and got up from his bed and went to the table because he was very hungry. Cook bowl, cook a hot meal. 
the magic bowl started to heat up immediately. The home smelled of sweet porridge again. <laughs> Perry had eaten a large plate of sweet porridge and wanted to stop the magic bowl from cooking. I think that's enough for breakfast. Stop, bowl. Don't cook, magic bowl. Um, stop. I'm full. Uh... But the magic bowl didn't stop cooking because those were not correct magic words. Um, dish, pocus, hocus, stop. The magic bowl did not stop. It continued to cook sweet porridge. Oh, oh no, what am I going to do now? This bowl won't stop. Stop, broken bowl, you're making a disaster. No matter what Harry said, the bowl kept cooking sweet porridge. By the time Sally returned home, Almost the whole house was full of porridge. My brother probably hasn't woken up yet, so now I'll cook him a delicious porridge. Wah! What is this? When Sally couldn't open the door of the house, she looked through the window, and what did she see? The whole house was sticky and full of porridge, as her brother Harry couldn't stop the bowl Help. from cooking. Help! Help. Oh, this is awful! Help. Harry! Uh, oh, sister, help me! I'm gonna fall in! Stop, bull! I'm full! After Sally's magic words, the bull finally stopped cooking porridge. So Harry was saved from drowning in porridge. <laughs> hey, yeah! <laughs> Thank you, Sally. What are we gonna do with all this sweet porridge now? Our house is all... Poor Digi. Sally had a great idea. She immediately went and called her other poor neighbors in the neighborhood. Each of them lined up outside Sally's house. While Harry filled the plates with delicious porridge, Sally handed them out to their hungry and poor neighbors. Ah, <laughs> thank you so much, Sally. You have fed our hungry stomachs. Yum! So delicious! Harry and Sally were very happy to help poor people like themselves. It felt good to help out their starving neighbors. Then, an old, poor-looking man came to them. Oh, it is true. A magic bowl of porridge. I've been walking for days to find food for my wife and children. I am so tired. Please... Give me the magic bowl that I may go home and feed my family. What are we going to do now, Sally? If we give the magic bowl, we'll both starve. Don't think like that, Harry. The man's children are hungry. Children should not go hungry in this world. Take the bowl and take it home to your family. At that moment, the man turned into a beautiful young fairy. Oh, you, you are the fairy who did me a favor. You have made me really happy, Harry and Sally. You fed the poor people living in the town and helped the man whose children were hungry. In return for your favor, you can keep the magic bowl of porridge forever. You deserve it. Really? really? <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! Every day from then on, Harry and Sally continued to hand out porridge to the poor people of the town. Their generous hearts became as sweet as the porridge they shared. As they saw happy children, young and old people with their stomachs full, they also lived a happy and peaceful life. The End It was a cold and snowy New Year's night. The people were passing by with their warm coats, gloves and scarves. They were all in a rush to get somewhere. Some were late in rushing to get home and some were going to a venue to celebrate the new year. Children were running around on the streets throwing snowballs to each other. Of course they were the ones enjoying the snow the most. They were playing with each other and laughing hysterically. But on the streets there was a girl, different than the ones that were playing. This little girl was standing in the middle of the street, watching the other kids play. 
She did not have a hat to protect her from the cold like others. Her clothes were light and ripped, and the slippers on her feet didn't fit her right. They were big. She was holding a box in her hands, shivering from the freezing cold. The little girl barely noticed the car coming right at her. Hey kids, stay on the side of the road, you're gonna get run over. The little girl threw herself on the sidewalk that second. But while she was running, the very big slippers on her feet flew off. When she was on the sidewalk, she turned around and looked. She saw a boy running with her slippers. My slippers! She yelled and ran after him, but the kid ran away fast. Having no choice but to walk barefoot, she seeked for a shelter next to a wall. She opened the box she had been holding and she put it down. She was looking in the box full of matches with her eyes watery from the cold. This was a little match girl, but she could not even sell one box of matches that day. If she could make a sale and earn some money, she could go home and have at least a bowl of warm soup with her mother. So she started yelling with her thin, shivering voice from cold and sadness. Matches! Matches! Anyone wants matches? Matches! Nobody on the street paid any attention to her, so she sat down next to the wall. Her fingers started to ache from the cold. She could not bear the pain anymore. Somehow, she had to warm up. She opened a box and pulled out a match. Her fingers were numb and she could barely hold a match. With her shivering hands, she lit the match on the wall and suddenly a warm orange light surrounded her. Poor girl passed the match from one hand to the other to warm her fingers. Her hands were not cold anymore. She found herself in front of a burning stove. She stared at the fire and started dreaming. She was sitting in front of a big stove in a beautiful room. She had a woolen sweater on her, furry boots on her feet and a beanie on her head. It was so hot she began to sweat. But suddenly, the match went out. With the match out, those sweet dreams also vanished. Her little fingers began to freeze and ache once again. She lit up another match. At that moment, a cold wind blew. The little girl turned to the wall to keep the match from going out and she covered the fire with her hands. Whilst she was looking at it, the wall suddenly vanished and opened up. There was a big room inside. There were all sorts of food spread on a table with a white cloth and the silver candlesticks on the table lit up the room like daylight. She stared at the table and saw that in the middle of the table there was a beautifully grilled big piece of meat. She immediately ripped a piece of it and put it in her mouth. Suddenly she wasn't hungry anymore. The little match girl wanted to take another piece of meat. She reached out but the match she had in her hand went out pretty fast. Poor girl's hand burned and she threw the match away. Ow! Ow! As soon as she threw away the match, the feast on the table and the room vanished. The wall reappeared. Little match girl lit another match. Now she was in an even bigger dream. She was sitting under a tree on a summer night, looking at the stars above. It was still warm, even though it was night time. The little girl could not take her eyes off of the stars. She never saw the sky and the stars so clear and sparkling before. Then suddenly, she saw a shooting star. She thought to herself, there goes another one of us flying into eternity.
These were actually her grandmother's words. At that moment, she saw her grandmother appear. When you see a shooting star, know that someone will take its place, my dear. Her grandmother was visible for a brief moment, and then when she disappeared, the little match girl called after her. Grandmother, stop! Don't go! Don't go, please! I really missed you! To see her grandmother one more time, she lit up another match. She forgot how she was freezing from cold in the middle of the street and started dreaming once again. Every time she lit up a match, she felt as if she was seeing her grandmother and hearing her voice. The little girl lit up another match. Her surroundings lit up like daylight. She never saw her grandmother this beautiful before. Her loving face made her forget all the cold and bitter days she had ever been through. She did not want this moment to finish, so she lit up the final match in a hurry. Her grandmother appeared in front of her again. She reached out her arms to hold the little match girl's hand. They started to fly up into the sky together. The little girl felt a sudden relief. There was no cold or hunger anymore. At that moment, another shooting star went on by. In the morning, the people who passed by on the street saw the little match girl laying down by the wall. Her eyes closed but with a sweet smile on her face. She had a lot of burnt matches around her. The matches which, with their flames, brought her dreams alive that no one would ever dream about. Once upon a time, somewhere very far in the land of the elves, lived three elves. These elves were getting ready to become good-hearted fairies and off they went on their journey to the world of humans. Our duty awaits for us, guys. Come on. I'm very excited. Finally, we too will see the world of humans. I want every single person to be very happy. If we help the humans and make them happy, we too will become good-hearted fairies. In an old house, there lived an old man and his wife. The old man made a living by making shoes in his workshop in their home. And sometimes he repaired old shoes. The shoemaker bought new leather to make new shoes from the money he earned. One day, he bought leather from the money he had made. He arrived home. The piece of the leather he had bought was only enough to make one pair of shoes. He left the piece of leather on the table, left the room closing the door and went into his bedroom. In the morning, the shoemaker woke up. Sitting in his bed, he had a good stretch. He thought about the type of shoe he was going to make. And like every other morning, he finished the breakfast his wife had prepared for him. Thank you very much, dear. I must be off to work now. Today I will make a very nice pair of shoes. Last night you made a pair of shoes. Do you have enough leather to make another pair? The old man was amazed because he knew he didn't make any shoes before he slept last night. And so the old man quickly ran to his workshop and his wife followed. As he opened the door, what does he see? The piece of leather he had left on the table from night before had turned into very pretty shoes. The shoemaker's eyes nearly came out of its sockets. When did I make these shoes? I do not remember. I think I have become really old. The shoes were that 
pretty that the shoemaker quickly put them in front of the window and waited for a customer. Soon after, a rather wealthy looking customer saw the shoes from the window and came in. Good day. I would like to buy the pair of shoes in front of the window. Doesn't matter what it costs, they are by far the best pair of shoes I have ever seen. The old man, with great happiness, saw the pair of shoes, and he didn't ask for any more than what it was worth. This time the shoemaker was on his way to get leather for the two pairs of shoes. And again he left the leather on top of the table, and before he left the room, he turned around and had another look at the piece of leather and went off to bed. As soon as he woke up, he ran straight to his workshop. This time round, there were two pairs of amazing shoes sitting on the table. Once again, the shoemaker was very happy. He placed the shoes in front of the window. The same day, he sold both pairs of shoes for a very good price. And off he went again to buy more leather. Of course, in the meantime, he was wondering who was making these lovely pairs of shoes. He placed the leather on the table and went to his room. In the morning, he had a pile of shoes on the table. The shoemaker sold every single pair that day. For a very long time, the old man was able to make a living with the money he had made from the shoes. With some of the money he had made, he continued to buy leather. But the shoemaker was so curious as to how and who was making these pairs of shoes. At last, one night, he decided to hide in the closet in his workshop and was determined to find out who was making them. Tonight, I will finally be able to meet the shoemaker. When the time had passed midnight, the workshop's window opened and in entered the elves. One of the elves accidentally bumped into a flower pot. Hearing the noise, the old man jumped out of his spot. Would you be careful? You're going to wake them up. When the old man pushed the door and had a sneak peek, he couldn't believe his eyes. He rubbed his eyes, looked again, and what did he see? There were three elves on the table. They were dancing and working at the same time. One of them cut the leather, one was sewing, and the other one was gluing it together. Then they tied the laces and polished the shoes. The elves were working so fast that with the flick of an eye, there were countless pairs of shoes on the counter. They're all beautiful! Come on, let's leave before someone wakes up. The elves left as they had arrived, dancing with joy and laughter. The shoemaker stepped out of his hiding place. He ran to his wife and told her all that had happened. And of course, his wife couldn't believe what she heard. But when she saw the countless pairs of shoes sitting on the counter, she knew that her husband couldn't do them all in one night. They agreed to thank the elves for what they had done. The following day, the old shoemaker's wife prepared a feast. At midnight, when the elves arrived at the workshop, they saw the feast on the table. Look at all that food. Do you think it's been prepared for us? Of course it is for us, you silly. Otherwise, why would they bring it at this hour? I think we have completed our mission in this house. Now we can go to the other houses that need our help. The shoemaker and his wife woke up and walked into the workshop and instead of seeing the food they had left, they saw a pile of shiny shoes. 
After that day, the elves never returned again. The old shoemaker and his wife were able to get by with all the money they had earned for the rest of their lives. The shoemaker thought that after working for so many years, this was his reward. That is why he never stopped making shoes, and whenever he thought about the little elves, he was forever thankful and grateful. Gopi went to his field unhappily that day. Because even though it was summer, his field was still not yielding any crops. Oh, my field has not yielded any crops today either. What am I going to do now? If I can't deliver crops to the kingdom, I'm going to be in trouble. One day, just as Gopi was about to give up digging on his barren fields, his shovel hit a hard object. Huh? What's that? As he continued digging, he realized that it was a pot. What's a pot doing in my field? And it's empty inside. Ugh. Gopi was very unhappy that he had spent so much effort with no reward. He dropped his hoe in the pot and lay under a tree to rest. After a while, when he wanted to take his hoe to return home, he realized that there were 100 more hoes in the pot. What? How can this happen? I only have one hoe. Gopi emptied the pot full of hoe. And this time, put his shovel in it. But what is that? Another 100 shovels immediately appeared in the pot. Or is it this pot? A magic pot? Who would have thought? Gopi was both amazed and thrilled. He brought the pot straight back to his house. He excitedly tried a chicken egg in the pot and left it in the pot. Soon, the pot was overflowing with eggs. <laughs> I can't believe my eyes! Then, he put his apple and bread in the pot. The magic pot gave Gopi hundreds of apples and bread. Now I don't have to deal with this barren field. I can sell these multiplied products in the kingdom market. Every day, Gopi took the pot's multiplied goods to the kingdom and tried a new product every day. One day clothes, the next day vegetables, and another day beans. Whatever he put in the magic pot, it multiplied. Other sellers were jealous of his success and complained about Gopi to a soldier of the king. The next day, the soldiers secretly followed Gopi. Gopi took the magic pot that morning and put a chick in the pot to sell at the kingdom market. A little later, hundreds of chicks came out of the pot. The soldier couldn't believe his eyes. With hundreds of chicks running around Gopi's house, one accidentally fell into the pot, producing another hundred chicks. Gopi even had a chick on his head, under his chair, and in his dinner plate. The soldier immediately went and told the king what he had seen. The king ordered that Gopi and his magic pot be brought to him immediately. Gopi went before the king, and the king confiscated the pot from him for the kingdom's treasure. Gopi was very upset. Let me take a closer look at this magic pot that will enrich my wealth. <laughs> the king approached the magic pot and bent down into it. 
my king, be careful, please. But just then, the king slipped. He could not keep his balance and fell right into the pot. No, the king has fallen into the cauldron. In just a few minutes, 100 more of the king had formed in the hall. The soldiers were confused about who to obey. Kings were fighting each other for the throne, each claiming to be the real king. I am the real king. No, it's me, the real king. No, I am the real king. Shut up. I am the king. When Gopi realized how dangerous the magic pot could be, he sneaked out of the palace during the confusion and took his pot with him. He went straight to a cliff and threw the magic pot off the cliff. The pot disintegrated into pieces and disappeared. From that day on, Gopi's field began to grow crops once again. And Gopi understood that the land became fertile not by magic, but by labor. And he lived in wealth forever.